And Tiffany has operated solo firm since 2016. And um, one of the things that we all remember is she's her very active involvement in the lead bar. And um, she's going to have that perspective of uh, doing what seems like she does best in terms of uh, the in face personal relational uh, marketing that she does in, in terms of most women who she is out here. Um, we have David Summerflick. Say that correctly? You sure did. And David's a digital marketing specialist with over 20 years experience working for agencies across North America. Um, some of his past clients include Microsoft, LL Time Warner, um, the city and county of Denver, Johnson, Johnson and Wales University, and many small business owners uh, across the country and providers across the country. So. And we have Suzanne Boy. And Suzanne recently opened a small firm, uh, Boy Agnew, Donovan. After uh, growing a successful employment at a larger law firm uh, previously. And so, uh, please welcome to my guest. And, and I'm, I'm just going to jump right to it because um, we started a few minutes late here and I, I want to really get into the good questions here. Um, so, Stan, the first question is going to be for you. Um, your, your small firm just opened this year and, and you have three attorneys. So in, in your initial stages, what's been your primary uh, focus on your digital marketing efforts to get your practice off the ground? And uh, did you manage that process internally or did you uh, have a consultant or did you outsource it in some way? So our, our journey has been a little unique because we did come from a big firm and we're all established attorneys with established practice areas and established client base. but. When, if for those of you who've ever left a law firm to start your own, you never really know until after it's really too late whether your clients are going to come or not because you can't tell your clients that you're going until you know, you know it's you know, pursuant to the bar rules. So when we first figured out that we were going to jump ship and create this firm, we wanted to make sure that we, or our goal I should say, was to make sure that we had our digital marketing tools in place, primarily a website um, and also social media. Since we, uh, you know, we had a a lead time of several months before we made our announcement at the old firm um, to, to prepare, but we were so careful about who we were giving notice to. We wanted, it was obviously something that we needed to keep private. Um, so <laughs> contrary to our gut feelings and gut um, reactions, we didn't use anybody locally and we didn't ask for recommendations because we were again trying to make sure that we were you know, doing things quietly until we were ready to make our announcement. So I um, initially hired a digital marketing firm. We did everything ourselves, hired a firm out of state. Um, long story short, um, our website was not up when we, when we started our firm. It was not up for a month after we actually opened our doors. It was a complete disaster in experience. Uh, so don't do that. <laughs> uh, what I learned after having that experience was um, you know, how important recommendations were. And so we, once we got our doors up and running, I was actually talking to the gentleman who handles our IT. If you need anybody for that, I have a wonderful person. He's amazing. He was like, oh, well, we do websites too. And I was like, you're hired. <laughs> um, so we hired him. He did our website. He literally got it up and running in two weeks. It was amazing. I can't recommend him enough. Um, we haven't done a whole lot with social media other than we created a page. And I had somebody, I hired somebody actually from Upwork who was also amazing to do our, um, you know, the profile picture and the headers and all of those things. Uh, but we focused primarily on trying to get that website up and running when we, when we opened our doors, even though we were a couple of months late uh, due to the experience of not getting recommendations before we, we uh, hired. So, fun times in the beginning. <laughs> and, and I'll have a follow up for you after that, but before I get there, um, if you're comfortable with it, what what can you estimate for someone who uh, maybe in the room thinking of defecting themselves, and what what kind of a startup Start capital from marketing should they think about? So <laughs> we paid the guy who didn't do the work and never got our money back. So we'll just take that out and pretend like it never <laughs> happened. <laughs> uh, but I would say I mean, we were able to get the 
actual website up and running. We also ended up hiring a local marketing firm. Um, once we made our announcement and everything was published, we were able to hire the local people that we know. Um, so we hired um, Conrad PR Marketing, and so they handled a lot of our print advertising. But I would say uh, we certainly spent, even with the little snap, we had to get in, under ten thousand dollars on all of that. I, I think our website was less than five. The real website less than five, and and I literally couldn't recommend that guy enough. He's been wonderful. The comic has been great too. And so the follow up is, if she had come to you, David, what, <laughs> would, what would your must do's have been? In Don't do that. That's, that's <laughs> I wanted to touch on the experience that, that you had because I've heard that story so many times. And we were talking about that before everybody started coming in. Uh, I was a mediator uh, briefly, uh, but my experience basically is about 20 to 25 years working for many different mid-level marketing and agencies. And when I went off on my own, because I enjoyed mediation, I, I heard from so many lawyers that had similar experiences, and it, it just drove me nuts. And so after a while, I said, let me start my own uh, individual consultancy working specifically with solo practice lawyers, mediators, and small, mobile, you know, really growth-oriented law firms. But one of the things that I hear all the time, how do I find someone who's reputable? How do I know? Why don't you go to Fiverr or Upwork or what have you? And it's a, it's a counter-call thing, those types of sites. And what you do is you look basically for the same thing that you would for any other service professional. Uh, educational credentials, professional affiliations, professional memberships, uh, live sites that you can look at uh, right now, but also testimonials, references from verifiable sources. Um, and yeah, working with someone local is a big, big plus because unfortunately, if you're not local, that sense of urgency can really, really easily be displaced. So since I touched on that one, let me go ahead and answer your, your question directly, uh, Victor. What are three must-haves? Must-is. Okay, so I actually wrote this down last night because I'm going to be a little bit nervous. Okay, <laughs> three must-haves, and this is the holy grail of website digital marketing period. Because uh, when you talk about websites and SEO, does anybody here not know what SEO is? It's okay if you don't. Okay, SEO basically is search engine optimization. is how Google finds your site and ranks it. So to say it's important is an understatement. If you're not on that first page of Google search results, statistically, nobody finds you. Okay, and that's just the way people are psychologically and emotionally. So if you want to be on the top of that first page, it's very valuable real estate. So SEO is number one. If you have a website and you're not ranking it, at least on that first page of Google, for what you do in your city and state, for your type of specialty or practice, then being online is almost irrelevant. Um, and, and second of all is what I call content repurposing. Well, what does that mean basically? We all know what repurposing means. That's basically, let's say that since you're a lawyer, I'm not. So let's say that you were to write a blog post about what you're special. Okay, employment law. I can't write about that. And it's very difficult to outsource that. Because uh, you don't want somebody overseas writing what they think they know about that. So let's say that you or someone you work with about blog post about employment law. It's time consuming for you with your area of expertise. So let's say you write one per month. You take that blog post that you just wrote, then you uh, create an infographic image, right? Now you've got something for Pinterest. Uh, what are the other image sharing sites? There's like 10 more, right? So you have an infographic image. <coughs> then you do a podcast, which is very, very low startup. So you've got the blog post, the podcast, you've got the image. Well, I mean, hell. You could get in front of the camera and do a little video and get someone working with you to do a video. Now you put that all together, look at all the content you've got for YouTube, for Pinterest, for all the different social media platforms. And all it takes is a level of organization. And for one person, it's a lot to do. And for a lawyer, personally, I wouldn't do it because it's not your area of expertise. You're more valuable in court. When you're not in court, you're losing money. You need to fill billable hours. At least that's how I look at it. It's about making money and running a business. So DIY really, to me, is a waste of time and, and capital. But SEO, content repurposing, and third, and most importantly, I shouldn't say most importantly, Google My Business. Because 
If you look up, I just did this about two weeks ago, okay? If you Google Fort Myers Marketing Agency, I just wanted to see if I could do it for Google, okay? Fort Myers Marketing Agency, look it up on Google. On the, the top of that search result, the top of number one. I didn't spend a penny, but because I'm local and I got the, you know, signed up for Google My Business, I'm number one. Now, in a few months, it should swing around so that also my listing is at the top of Google search results for that time. Could I do that with a law firm? Of course. You just go get a matching domain name that matches what you want to do, fortmyerslawfirm.com. It'll go straight to the top of Google search results almost immediately. Get matching uh, description. I mean, it, it takes 20 minutes. But if you don't know to do that, then you can't do it. And that's the problem. So DIY doesn't do it. If you're given an empty template, it's the equivalent of me going to LegalZoom. You know, like I said, I'm going to be behind bars if I try to represent myself. It doesn't work. So those are three must-haves. I'm sorry, that's a long one. No, no, perfect. Thank you very much. But yeah, I don't have, I never went to law school. So my passion is marketing. So I love to take people who really need to be number one and really need to consolidate overhead and really change the paradigm and just totally reverse it. So I love doing that for me, so it's something I'm really fired up about. So, thank sorry. You. No, no, thank you very much. And the ne next question, we'll follow that up with uh, Tiffany, and, and we, we talked about the digital side of things, but you're someone who gets a lot of your leads from these, these, uh, these relational uh, kind of aspects of your marketing and your, your, uh, your involvement in the community. And I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that and how you uh, you go from meeting someone to then being a client, or from meeting someone to then calling and saying, I have this person. Yeah, definitely. So so I grew up here in Fort Myers, and poor planning actually did not plan on moving back. So it was last month thing, no one can say no free child care, my mom's here. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I came home and I'm like, oh goodness, okay, well, I do know a decent number of people here, you know, my family's from here. Maybe that'll lead to some of the relationships, and, and that really did. And I also think you're, um, as a young attorney born straight out from the solar, you know, there's kind of stigma around that, but it's happening more and more. But I figured if I'm going to do this on my own, people are going to question me, I'd rather go like above and beyond. I'm going to get them all the way up, meet people, and hope that they remember me, and join these organizations. And um, I really just tried to, like, to take these people that I knew and turn them into clients. If someone came to me with like a family law, I should have been family law. But instead of just saying like, oh sorry, I can't help you, I try to really take time to be like, hey, how many times when you find the right person? And then when they need you, they come back to you because you didn't just tell them, you know, sorry, see you later. They appreciate you giving them time. And I know some of you might be thinking, well, I don't have time to talk to you who aren't going to pay me today. But it's really paid off for me. Um, and then as far as this kind of stuff, I think I'm going to go to the second question. But, um, as far as joining organizations, um, it's definitely time consuming. But I think it's the best decision I made. You know, uh, being on the LCBA board, I'm sure John can relate. Uh, since our president, you know, the relationships and opportunities you get are incredible. You know, when I was, I had only been an attorney for a year and a half, and I was at a private dinner with appeals to, you know, DCA judges and all these judges, and you just don't get opportunities like that to talk to people and get their insights. So I, I do think. It pays off, and you just, if you give people time, even when it's not going to necessarily make it right now, I feel like they come back to you. So I try, I try to, um, I try to really do that. I try to, um, you know, care, even when it, it's not. And then you send it out, and that, you get referrals from other attorneys, so I really think it comes full circle. Okay, and I know that's true. I know, you know, you're very involved, and, and people here know you, we refer people to you, and, um, that's an important part of it. And so to follow it up, Suzanne, uh, could you tell us about the difference in mentality or approach from marketing when you're at a big firm to marketing when you're at a small firm, including reaching those people who might have a mentality that my business needs a big firm? Sure. So it's interesting because, again, going back to before we left, we weren't really sure what we were going to end up with, you know, who was going to come, how many clients we were going to follow. And so we took the approach that we were going to have to actively get clients. So that's why we wanted to focus on the website and social media. 
which was different than being in a large firm where we have some, we have literally a marketing person who does all of that stuff for you. Um, I think now that we are five or six months in, we have realized that at least for us in our practice area, it's really, the marketing's not that different because it's so relationship based. And going back to what Tiffany was saying about involvement, for me personally, while I'm, I'm glad we have the website and while I hope at some point I'll be better about social media because I really have been, I'm not good at that right now, um, it's still very relationship based and for me, uh, you know, the way that I grew my practice in the first place was by getting involved in organizations like for employment law, I do management side employment law, so I don't do the plaintiff side at all, but I deal with HR professionals all the time, so I join the local HR board, I've been on it for like a million years now, it feels like. But those relationships have really helped us, you know, continue, you know, what we started at the big firm and what we've now been able to, you know, bring and grow at our small firm. Um, to answer the question about whether we've had any anyone with hesitancy to, you know, kind of make the jump from a big firm to the small firm with us, or whether that's been a barrier at all, we've been fortunate that it really has not. And we worried about that. We actively talked about, you know, well, what about some of the firm, you know, the clients that have a bunch of work and they want to have a one-stop shop for someone who can do their employment, their real estate, their estate planning. And, and some clients do, I suppose, want to have that, but we really didn't encounter it the way that we thought we would, um, which again, returns me to like, it's, it's relationship based. And, you know, for me, so much of what I do is, is clients with repeat business. I don't have a lot of one-off clients that you know you, you represent and you do a handbook and then you never hear from them again. You have people who are constantly calling and saying, hey, what do I do about this? Or can I terminate this person? Or and so again, the relationships and you know growing those and, and taking time to really invest in them has been the same at the small firm as it was as the big firm. What I will say, the one difference that I have felt very painfully is not having the help to do the marketing, the social media, the you know posting blog posts, and you know even if we drafted content, we had somebody who could go and post and, and do mm -hmm. all of that. So that's a definite difference from the big firm to the small firm. But we've been fortunate that the relationships that we've built over the years have, have, have allowed us to you know we're busy enough that we're not quite as focused on that part right now. Even though it is something I would love to be able to invest a little more time in. I want to feedback on that. So when I first started, I figured I'm going to have to blog on social media all the time. And, you know, there's all these tools you can set Facebook to post for you later on and things like that that are super useful. But I do think that as a small firm, there's, small firm, you know, there's, there's you know, you're kind of time to do all the social media stuff. Um, but I, it is interesting because some people will come to me and say, you know, I can hire this big firm. Or big firm, they think maybe it might be better. But... Even at the big firm, you're saying that those relationships are what matter, and um, so I definitely think it's important to, even if you are a larger firm, put time into making those relationships with your clients. Maybe, maybe you won't be at that large firm for long, and we, I know a lot of people in the in, and they were so happy to do that, so it's really important. Right, right. And, and so, you know, there's a lot of busy professionals in here who are probably checking their watches every once in a while. And so a lot of people not only don't have time to do these things, but not even don't even have time to want to learn how to do it, stuff in the first place. Because before you can even just hit the ground running, yeah, some people just want to know, if I go to this marketing guy, I write him a check for five grand, how am I going to get my best bang for my buck? What are they going to do for me? And that question is something that I think that is perfect for David to answer. Well, yeah, thank you. Uh so how do you know that you're going to get ROI? Yeah, well, how are you going to get your best return on investment for just right. writing someone a check? If I came and wrote you a check and just said, help me, I don't know what that had That would be crazy. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I would, you wouldn't do that, and I would, I would get it right back to you and say, sir, what's going on? Um, the most important thing is to really take the value of it. It's like, what you were saying and what you experienced. If you're a lawyer, I mean, look, you went to law school, you put in the time, you put in the hours, you have an area of expertise that's extremely valuable. You probably have a specialty that's extremely valuable and important to you that you're passionate about. You need to be filling billable hours, you need to be in court, and that's ultimately how you're going to earn a living, not by, you know, sizing an image 
or working on branding to make sure that the pamphlet matches, the business card matches, the image matches, the collateral, and everything is unified and, and branded. That's where it comes to outsourcing. It's just like I can't represent myself in court. The, the judge would throw me out. And that's as it should be. Um, so to answer your question, the first thing that I would do is what I call discovery, but it's not the same as what you do, obviously, but it's similar. Where basically I have a, at least three short conversations with whoever I would work with to find out more about specific objectives in a digital marketing called KPIs, key performance indicators. How do you define success? So what's success for you may be different than for her. It may be, look, I need to get more clients calling me on a regularly recurring basis. I just need more clients, period. Whereas someone else might come along and say, look, I've got a pre-existing site, but it's not converting. I'm not getting any leads from it at all, period. I need you to step in and change that. Or I want to get a specific type of client or I want more of my ideal types of clients. I don't just want uh, everybody calling me. I want a very specific demographic. And with Facebook, which reaches over 2 billion, still people, I think it was, 2 billion people per day, um, and Google Analytics, I mean, there's no reason why you can't do that. So you can use digital marketing to very, very surgically, specifically um, tailor ads for a very a set group of people. So three things I would do is discovery. Um, I would compare what you're currently doing to a large and more profitable entity that kind of matches up what you want to do or where you want to be five years from now. And I would look at their SEO. I don't know if the SEO is legally protected. I don't think it is. But uh, I would just compare that. So I'd do discovery. I'd do some comparison to large and more profitable uh, local enterprises, and then I would develop a multi-tier marketing plan. So I grew up around a lot of military people. So for me, a military plan, like in the military, you know, you've got land, sea, psychological operations. They've got multiple ways to wage a military campaign or win a war. So for marketing, the way I was always taught to do it is you have multiple tiers, and each tier is a specific strategy. So once that's organized, there's no way that you're going to lose because you know that you're going to hit your objectives at least in one of those areas. And even if you don't fulfill the success metrics 100%, you're going to get the ball rolling very quickly that way. So if you work with someone who's like, sure, mister, give me your money right away. I can make you number one in Google. There has to be some in-depth conversations. There has to be some discovery. Sorry, but I guess the, the question is, though, really along the lines of, People who are worried that hey, am I gonna if I write if I have a budget of five thousand dollars and I start working with someone, is that gonna get me anywhere? Is that yes. going to the answer is yes. yes. The answer is yes. Because if you look at it comparatively, if we talk about marketing, let's say you want to put an ad in the local newspaper and you want that ad to run for at least a couple of weeks, right? But what is that gonna run in? Two, three thousand. So and then you can't guarantee results. If you put uh, an ad on a bus, it's going to cost a couple of grand, at least for a week or two. And they can't guarantee the results either. They won't do it. The same for a billboard. So for almost that exact same amount, you embrace digital marketing, which statistically, in short, I mean, there's no way that you can't get more uh, eyeballs and more leads that way. But also to give you a specific answer, I guarantee the results or else I won't take it. So, that's another reason why I screen and have discovery for whoever I would take on to make sure that we're not being fit. If there's pushback or resistance to change, um, that's not something I want to work with because I can't knock down the park. There's going to be too much drama. So I guess that's good advice too. And when you work with somebody uh, to market your firm, you should really make sure that they're taking the time to get to know what your needs really are. Rather right, than yeah, absolutely. Because the at the end of the day, a solo practice a lawyer is a small business owner. And you know what works for small businesses works for the solo practice lawyer or even a small startup law firm. Um, the, 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 the ways that you do things are the same, some of the terminology is going to be different. You know, you're gonna there's gonna be some variations, of course. Uh, but by and large, it's it's something that's very, very achievable. And statistically, 
digital marketing works at a much higher success rate than all other more traditional offline forms of marketing. And in fact, I even have some of the research I brought uh, with me to show you from Nolo and some of these other companies, Martindale, and some other big industry providers such as Clio and some other companies. There's a reason why more and more corporate uh, entities are getting involved in leader marketing because they know they can do it. You know, and for a long time, for a long time now, big law has been resistant to change. Um, and the, the legal arena as a whole has gradually slowly become more awakened to digital marketing, I think, over time, and now slowly beginning to see the return on investment for that. Right. Yeah. But to answer your question very specifically, a, a lot of people are going to be hesitant to say, yes, I absolutely guarantee you results, but I'm older, I've been around the block, and I'm not going to take somebody on if I can't guarantee that I can show some kind of tangible uh, ROI within 60 to 90 days. You mentioned that um, you know, SEO is legally protected. So this yeah. was interesting. Yesterday, I don't know if any of you, do any of you read the newsletter you get from your board of other representatives, the email? So yesterday, that email, oh, I guess, four of ours issued an opinion on, um, I guess, those firms using other firms' buzzwords to- Search uh, terms. Yep, yep. And uh, to better their you know, SEO. And um, it didn't result in a big lawsuit. Um, I mean, yeah, uh -oh, I, I guess, I mean, I guess it's public, right? So I don't know. I guess Farron Farrow was using Morgan and Morgan in their SEO terms or something. <laughs> so they would populate. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely getting to be more. Right. You know? and, 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 and let me let me just say, you can, there's such a thing as a symbol. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, there's such a thing as moving one word over here. So instead of saying Fort Myers Law Firm, Law Firm Fort Myers. And I mean, when I looked up this morning, just went to Google, type of Fort Myers law firm. Nobody has a domain name. Nobody's number one. And I mean, hello. If I tried to do that in Denver, they'd crush me. I can't get it done. I was shocked when I saw Fort Myers marketing agency. I'm like, why would you guys leave that on the table like that? It's ten dollars. Go get the domain name. I mean, if if you get one lead from it, that's worth anywhere from ten to thirty grand at least, right? Why not spend ten dollars on the domain? I mean, if you get one lead from spending three to five grand, it's worth it. So the resistance is, I think, more like well, we don't really necessarily need it. I do agree that a lot of cultivating ideal clients is relation relationship based, and I practice the same thing even on the web. App. It's still relationship based, but um, digital marketing at this point is like. I don't remember what the legal term is that I'm term for, but it's de facto basically. I mean, there's no reason not to engage it. Thank you, and I agree with that. And um, I, I looked up for my law firm in my pocket to see if I could buy it for $12 for Google domain. <laughs> Someone has it. I, just, uh, yeah. I bought it this morning. <laughs> for my law firm.net. I saw it when I bought it. I was just curious. In my mind, within six months, I'll be number one in Google without a law firm. Okay, so uh, Tim, let's jump back to you. Uh, how how could you, what advice would you give people in this room in terms of how they could go about starting to get involved in the Lee Bar and how they could specifically be involved in a way where they're trying to you know market their firm without being obnoxious? Yeah. <laughs> so you know. Lord Bar has very strange rules about solicitation. So, um, gosh, it's so funny because sometimes you'll see on like Facebook groups, someone will be for a lawyer and someone will comment, like, oh, I can help you with that. You can't do that. You know, you can't. Mm -hmm. um, you can't. But, uh, you know, these groups give you, and not just Lee Bar, so um, the groups that are related to your organization or to your um, specialty, I don't know if I can back that later, but um, she mentioned, she, Suzanne mentioned she was on the um, the board for you know, like all the HR people. Well, I do a lot of agricultural law. Farm people are my people. I live on a farm, they relate to you, and a lot of them are old money, good money, they're not businesses. So I am very active in the Florida Farm Bureau. And the Florida Farm Bureau, locally, they have um, like just one dinner a year. And I had dinner, oh my gosh, it's great. I pick up at least like eight or 10 clients every year. 
just from this this one dinner um, because you know they don't see other firms coming you know marketing to the farmers because um, who, who does that right it's crazy um, and so I think it's really important to find organizations that do um, you know relate to your practice area also on top of like Levar, YLD. YLD is 35 years old and younger or your first five years of practice or your first five years if you come up from another state and um, you know there's a lot of like state bar events too that are really beneficial you know you, you go to these other conferences and you meet people and those are going to be great referral sources too um i know a lot of people do insurance defense or you know first party work they'll go to the wind conference and the um, association of public insurance adjusters conferences and they'll meet um they'll make connections there and so i think if, if you have a specific practice area or niche you're trying to get into um Take the time to try and find some organizations where you're going to meet like like-minded professionals. I went to school for aerospace engineering. I'm in a young professionals aviation group. Um, you know, they, they want to talk to people who can talk those same terms with them. You know, they can sit here and talk about digital marketing. There's all sorts of just about digital marketing terms that I'm like, no, dude, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, sounds great, <laughs> but it's it's important to find people for that area. I have no business going to a criminal justice seminar. I'm not gonna make any, I mean, I'm, you know, might make some meaningful connections, but that's not the best use of my time. So um, the good thing about like LEVAR, um, the Lee County Association for Women Lawyers, we have a ton of male membership. Um, you don't think that lawyers are gonna be your best referral source, but they really are. I mean, that's why people pay so much to advertise to other lawyers. Um, it's so funny, I was talking to Harry about just being a vendor at the annual floor of our annual convention the other day, and um, all these all these people go there just to make those connections. And they didn't get a lot of money to do it. Um, so try to find time. You know, I'm not saying hey, you have to be on a board to make it work for you, but do you take advantage of these events? Um, you'd be surprised. You really would. Thank you. Thank you for that. And um, and so let's jump back to you, Suzanne. Uh, now that you are how many months in this so far? Five. Five months in this. So, uh, what's your plan for when? I'm sure it's already happened. Things just get so busy that the marketing starts to uh, fall to the back burner. And how, how do you how do you uh, I guess approach it again and remind yourself to stay on it? So that's a it has already happened. I have totally neglected our digital marketing. I haven't even looked at our website in three months or our social media, and I feel. You know, like a fraud sitting up here on a marketing presentation <laughs> saying that I haven't made any marketing in the last three months. But, you know, going back to what Tiffany just said and what David said earlier, you've got to figure out your best use of your time. And in the beginning, again, we didn't know what things were going to look like. We didn't know if we'd have any work. We didn't know if we would have any money. We didn't know. So we were doing everything ourselves, and I was doing everything, especially because. For those of you who know my two partners, you know they will literally never ever be on social media, either one of them ever. <laughs> so that was all falling on me. Um, and I think, you know, I do need to find a different strategy, which probably is finding some way to to outsource help with that. You know, I'm at least at this point when I'm very busy and grateful to be busy for all the work that we do have, I still value the digital marketing. I know it's important. I, I want to be better about it, but right now my clients and my work are taking priority as they should. Mm -hmm. So I need to find a way to find help, like an outsource, you know, someone that can do all this stuff for me. And so that was something that I learned over the last five months. Like we just can't do it all. It's not it's not cost effective. It's not the best use of my time. And so we're we're slowly learning we need to outsource to carry. We need to outsource to you know, yeah, so we can outsource to people like David because we just we can't do it all, but I do know it's important, so I don't want to let it, you know, drop too much off my radar. And it's valuable because if you get one lead from it, it was worth it, wasn't it? Sure. Yeah. You know, that's what I look at. And I should and that's what I'm supposed to look at. I want to leave a few minutes at the end for some questions or if anybody wants to come up and talk to our panelists. So uh, David, I was hoping you can kind of Give us some final thoughts. Sure. On, um, tell us what is the importance of social media in terms of uh, marketing a law firm? Well, basically, the importance of social media is reach, it's scope. So let's put it, let me see if I can give you some real world examples. There's, and again, I don't know specifically the ins and outs. I do know that there are lawyers online giving advice. Maybe they shouldn't, 
but I see a lot of them doing it. And maybe there's a way that you can give advice and be vague and, and nebulous, I don't know. But I can tell you, I see a lot of it. Um, I can give you one example. I answer questions from time to time. I'm about to say, or Cora, Q U R A. Okay, and so I'll do, to make them more relevant and approachable to the audience, I'll do a video. I'll just sit at my, my desk, turn on the webcam. Hi, I read your question. This is David. Let me answer your question. And then I answer the question, send, send a link, and some other text, maybe an infographic image. And anyway, I did that for, answered a few questions for a couple weeks. One day I got a phone call from a lady, just said, hey, my boss saw something that you wrote on Quora, we're a small uh, company, we need someone to handle our digital marketing, can you do that? I said, yes ma'am, I sure can, I'll send the application in the mail, we'll send you the contract for your signature, be happy to on board you, here's our process. That was worth it for me, for a couple of hours answering silly questions. But now here's the thing, those questions are there forever. They're out there forever. My videos are there forever. I had people call me five years answer after I answered a question online somewhere. And I'm like, well, my, my company's changed. I don't live in Denver anymore, but I'm still happy to talk to you. Let me send your contract or your signature, get you on board. So the value of social media marketing is reach and scope. Again, it's that whole thing of having a marketing plan with multiple strategies. And you're basically saying, look, I need clients. I mean, who doesn't? You need clients on a regular recurring basis. And if this area is seasonal, all the more reason to, to take that approach. So you're basically just saying, I wanna make sure that I always have enough clients on a regular recurring basis. Social media marketing is a way to reach very, very specifically, uh, very targeted groups or limitless. And once you put it out there, it's there forever. So it's very important that it be branded, professional, answer specific questions. And the better it is, the more thorough the answer, the more you can use it, the more hits it's going to get. And how, how, is it, how does it target in terms of, you know, the people who pay us, they, they don't need us all the time. They need, they need us during a very specific time. And, and I feel like a lot of times they Google search it or, what, or something like that. Whereas, you know, if I'm Chick-fil-A, people always want Chick-fil-A. People always people don't really need Chick-fil-A all the time. So how does Facebook marketing, social media marketing, how does that hit the right people at the right time? Sure. Well, are there any divorce lawyers in here? Okay. So, okay, let's say, can I, vary, can I get away from Facebook too? Can I include other things? Sure. Okay. So let's say you're a divorce lawyer and you need to get more clients. Or you just want to. Maybe you don't need them, but you want to. You want to make sure that you have that farm basically set up for the future. So that you're always getting clients all the time on a regular, current, consistent basis. Let's say that's your goal, okay? So obviously it's in your interest to be number one in divorce attorney, divorce lawyer, divorce law firm in this region. So you wanna make sure that your SEO hits that. On Facebook, to get specifically with that, because it targets two to three billion people per day, you would get into Facebook, you'd set up an ad campaign, and because everybody knows about Zuckerberg and all the privacy violations, they can narrow in very, very specifically to find people who are in divorce support forums, people who are going through divorces and having all kinds of horrible issues going on, and you can specifically make ads that will appear to them. Now, personally, I don't know if I like that, but you can do it. And I don't see anything wrong with just having ads appear to people who are going through that in their lives, right? And we were saying before this group started, I knew a divorce attorney in Denver. Um, and he had a group on meetup.com. Okay, now, on meetup, you're allowed to have three groups. So he was devious. He had a group on meetup.com for divorce singles. You've been through divorce, horrible, terrible, oh my God, terrible. I wouldn't wish on anybody. But so he had a group, divorce singles. You've been through divorce, now you can meet the right one for you and hook up or whatever, however he phrased it, okay? So he had this group on meetup.com. He was getting a lot of people coming, because it was a singles group, he was getting a lot of people. All he needs is one person per month, or per quarter, whatever the, the needs are, to say, look, I'm going through these issues, I can really use your help. I already know you, I see you as this benevolent person on a regular basis. He had a farm set up. Now he took the other two groups that he was paying for, created the same, different groups, 
with different search terms, like new in town or whatever, and directed them all to the same physical location, same date, same time. Very clever. He never ran out of clients, never. I went to one because I was networking, but I'm like, dude, she got this down. You don't need my help, I'm out of here. We got it down. And his site is number one in Google for Denver, Colorado, divorce attorney. So he was rolling in clients. All you gotta do is repeat that for any other type of niche solo practice or niche law firm. Thank Did you. that kind of answer the question? Yes, absolutely. And what you do with Facebook, you can do with Pinterest. You can do uh, with LinkedIn, God knows. LinkedIn is very effective, extremely surgical and precise, whereas Facebook is more, more broad. So you can do the same thing. That's why I can say to somebody, look, I can guarantee results. If, if you're willing to meet me halfway, yeah, we can do it all right. In other words, with Facebook or other social media marketing, you're not necessarily putting a big billboard on the side of the road. No. You're putting, you're putting a billboard in certain people's houses that need you, right? Above their houses and in their houses. Yeah. And now you can put it on their TV screens, really. Well, I'll, I'll leave that. Who, who doesn't have a Roku or something you get online? You watch YouTube, and what do you see? Commercials for? I see Morgan and Morgan. I can't get them off the screen fast enough, no offense. But I see them all every day. So they're saturating YouTube. Right, right, right. And so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, open up for any closing comments that any three of you want to make. If not, then we'll open it up for questions. And, uh, and then if anyone want to come up and talk to uh, any of our panelists individually, you can do that then. I'll make a shameless plug. Um, two things. Number one, I adopted a road, a stretch of road by my house. Okay, I clean it out, it takes a couple minutes, and I did that probably about six or seven months ago. I was with a baby six months ago, so I wouldn't really work much. And I had three people call just because they saw my name on this adopted road sign, and it cost them zero dollars. Just a thought, second. Um, I know, right? But um, listen, it's free advertisement. Parking train yeah. has this bridge right here. Um, the second, the Florida Bar President, Michelle Suscour, she's in town. And um, we had a lunch today, diversity lunch university workshop. We have some great speakers. It's at City Burn from 12 to 1. So maybe if you're feeling it right now, come to the LCBA lunch today. Also, John Webb has a sweet fruity miracle game tonight. So that's a more casual setting. It's gonna be an LCBA um, night out, it's free. There's food and drinks included. Um, if you want to talk about soccer drama, I'll tell you how to get signed up for those things. But if you don't already come to some of the events, maybe do try and get your feet wet. If you use any of social media or how you kind of make yourself look a little more grandeur, you know, oh, this is me, Lord of our president. People who aren't lawyers are like, wow, this thing doesn't matter. You know, I mean, I, I mean let's be honest, right? Like, you know? So, shameless plug. We have a source of 1130, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? No, you don't have to, but if you want to make any more comments, you're welcome to. I think for me, the only thing that we haven't talked about that has been very successful for me personally from a marketing perspective, you know, second to just the relationship building, has been speaking, actually. Like, if you have a niche that you can speak on, um, I have gotten a lot of positive ROI from speaking engagements. So if you ever have the opportunity, even if it's a small group, if it's a big group, whatever, um, you know, finding a niche and letting people let you talk about it has been something that's been very valuable for me. Sort of like what I'm doing. And you can repurpose that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I'm digital marketing media. Yeah, I'm, I'm right here. And uh, uh, I'll, I'll, well, basically I'll just say uh, anybody who uh, is interested in learning more about digital marketing for a solo practice lawyer or a small law firm, you're more than welcome to look me up at defactodigital.co. Um, and I'd be happy to you know, email you information on whatever you like. Even if you'd like some tips, I just typed this up this morning, just having so much caffeine. Uh, <laughs> 50 uh, tips on how to get clients right now. I mean, look, if half of them work, it's worth it for you. And speaking engagements is one of those. Um, it's extremely effective. Every, when I was a mediator, I got uh, so many clients, and maybe I shouldn't have done it, but. Got plenty of clients anyway, just, you know, hey, after this case is over, let me uh, help you with your law firm website that's just not anywhere online and search results. Um, 
I did that quite a lot. But just speaking and getting out in front of professional associations, professional groups, absolutely. And that also goes into answering questions and being uh, the go-to person online if you can do that, if you have time for it. And I believe we are Facebook live streaming this right now, so if anyone wants to go and watch it afterwards, we can do it on the Solo Small Firm page. <laughs> Hey, watch me download it and repurpose it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's, All give right. Our, let's give our panelists a round of applause. Yeah, does anybody have any questions? Can I? Yeah, please. Maybe it's to David, but I don't know if everybody can. I'm sorry, I was a little late, but any opinion about AVO? Rip that up. Yeah, it's it. What, what's the cost of it? It's free. It's nothing. What do you got to lose? 10 minutes? Get your name on it. They ask questions. But, here, but here's the thing. If you put yourself on AVO and super lawyers and all the other directories, it's, don't do it unless it's going to look professional. Because there are a lot of people who post on LinkedIn and, and social media sites in general and directory sites and they don't have a photo or the information is incomplete. That does you more disservice than it does service. And studies have shown this over and over again repeatedly that people are turned off if they look at a profile and they don't see a smiling face or accurate information. Um, there's actually you know, several services that that's all they do is go through all the directory sites and all the social media sites and make sure that your information is all streamlined because if you've moved or, or what have you, they just go through everything and make sure that everything is streamlined and correct. So is it worth doing? Yeah. But if you're paying you know, 50 a month or something, it's negligible for a directory site. It's more important to be number one in Google. Anybody else have a question? Just my opinion. If you have anyone else wants to chime in. Super Wars is free. What? Super Wars. Yeah. Is that free still? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, if you can get listed and it's free and it takes you 10, 15 minutes, you have a nice image of yourself. There was one lawyer I talked to in, uh, in LA, I think it was. Um, and he had like a free Wix site. He wasn't getting anywhere. He was very angry about it. Anyway, I looked at his site. This would be nice. And he had one photo of himself on the site, standing in front of the courthouse. And he looked like this. <laughs> you know, like he just got his back really upset. And I'm like, you know, I would, I wouldn't call that lawyer because I'm intimidated. You're already intimidated enough because you're coming to it from the perspective of, look, I don't know the law, right? So it's intimidating. So you want to look friendly and, you know, and uh, also the other thing I want to just add as an aside, if you're going to be online, statistically studies have shown conclusively that if you have one video on the front page of your site, it converts like 35% higher, Google will rank you that much higher. You just have one video of yourself, it could be 10 seconds in front of a webcam. Hi, I'm so-and-so, this is what I do, and have your SEO matching website. And that's how I, I can get to number one in Google almost within like a few weeks just by having the SEO match the domain name, match the Google My Business listing, match the video, and then do social media content that matches all of that. Do many of you know if your websites are ADA accessible? Good yeah. question. Yeah, because that's a thing now. And there's <laughs> Good a jury question. going around and suing right and left because websites are not ADA accessible. It is a pain. It so, takes a couple hours to do that. Yeah, you can check, you can Google, there's like a website you type your link in, just something to think about. What about GDP, GDPR? The, the, what's the bridge thing, GDPR? Do you have to do that? Do it, do it. No? Okay. Hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, you want to in the EU. That's not All right, well, thank you very much for our panelists. And anybody has questions?
great job. Thank you. So I think all the members should please turn it off. Thank you.